I've got to get to the politi- political oh. day, uh, stories of the day. In San Francisco, you're going to love this. You've heard it already. The city's ultra-liberal district attorney, Chesa Boudin, faced a recall Tuesday. A majority of voters chose to remove remove him from office. Nearly 50,000 people voted against him. He's out. David Barnson is here. Usually watches the market for us, but today, politics. Is this the start of a real shift in California politics? No, it is not. And I say that not to be negative. You're killing me. Well, listen, when you see a shift in California politics, the power that the unions have there, we saw how much Newsom beat that recall last year. What it's a shift in is the voters say there's one issue we'll put aside politics. That's crime. So they threw out the, the school district people in San Francisco last year for that radicalization. Now they've thrown out this DA in San Francisco. I wouldn't say it's a whole shift in politics. I would say it's the one area that they've been willing to push back. But I, look, I just want to insist we are seeing a crack in that blue wall, aren't we? Well, I, we? I, I, in San Francisco, <laughs> last night, they threw out a radical district attorney. So I, I don't want to rain on your parade. <laughs> right. But I'm saying, is Gavin Newsom going to get reelected governor in California by over 20 points in November? Yes, he is. Really? Oh, most certainly. 20 most points? Certainly. He'll win? 20 points, it uh, could be 30. I, I, it's bad. It's bad. Okay. Maybe I'm it's just not saying, such a crack in the blue wall. But what you see is a better mayor coming in L.A., uh, a district attorney thrown out in San Francisco. So there's cracks, but it's not the whole political side. It's selected these issues because the left pushed these issues way too far. I just insist that there's going to be ripples from this cascading throughout the rest of the country. But I'm going to move on before you disagree with me again. I'll pray you're right. Let's talk markets. (laughs) We're on solid ground there, I think. Uh, I've asked every market watcher who's been on this program, have we hit bottom yet? Most of them are saying no. Maybe the worst is still to come. What say you on this? Yeah, well, you asked me before. I'll give you the same answer, which is anyone who answers is lying. They don't know. (laughs) They don't know. They don't know that we haven't. And they don't know that we have. But it's Market Watch's duty. It's their no, job it to say, hey, it, no, it are isn't. we at the bottom? Here's, here's my duty is to tell people that no one knows the answer to that. So, I, so when I say I don't know if we've hit a bottom or not, it isn't my duty to know. It's my duty to remind people that no one else knows. Do you have an opinion? I have an opinion that the NASDAQ tech stuff that's high priced could go lower. I have an opinion that good quality companies, whether they go lower or not from here, ultimately should still be bought. So my opinion is focus on quality and not worry about where the actual market will bottom out. It's an unknowable fact, Stuart. Well, you're going to be on this show for the next hour, so you've got plenty of time to, re- you know, to get back into To develop an crisis. opinion on that question. Oh, yes, yes. I'll pull out that crystal ball. Uh, and stop knocking Microsoft. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. All right. This, this is a moment when they need to reset. They, they need to pivot, and maybe they do that on Friday when we get the latest inflation oh, data. Cool. You're rolling your eyes because we say they can't. We say the left won't they let won't. the administration pivot. But look what Bill Clinton did, right? When people were complaining too much big government, what did he do? He changed that. He eventually cut taxes. He put work requirements on the welfare system, and he left office with a very high approval rate. But rating. the Democrats in those days were not run by the far left. Can they pivot? On inflation? Um, see, this is the problem. And we were talking about this energy earlier. Most of this is supply oriented and it's exactly what they want. They don't want exactly. more U.S. production. They don't. So they, it, they don't want it. That's why I disagree it's, with the rhetoric that they don't have an energy policy. They have one and it's doing what they want. It's pushing people out of oil and gas in U.S. Production. Even though it's political suicide oh, that pursue this. I'm sorry, I'm out of time. That's what I was going to say. They also get the low approval ratings yep. with this. Don't we right. look good or I'm sitting around the desk on that new shot? I really like this. Right. And then there's Roku. Show me that, please. There is talk about Netflix buying them. That's why they're up 4.8 percent. Any more on that? So Business Insider is reporting that the employees at Roku are discussing the possibility of Netflix coming in and buying them. And the question is why? Well, uh, Roku has been heavily discounted. The stock price is down 60 percent this year. So they're cheaper. And Netflix is already discussing a cheaper ad supported service. So ostensibly, as if this happens, Netflix would be able to offer its ad-supported tier on the Roku platform. David Barnson's head is about to explode. And so is yours. I don't think he thinks this (laughs) deal is up to much, do you? Well, I don't know if the deal happens or not, but it's more that I think the deal is a terrible idea. And here's why. 
Netflix has about $6 billion of cash on their balance sheet. Roku right now, way down in valuation, is about a $13 billion company. So Netflix can't buy it without giving stock. Well, it doesn't matter that Roku's stock is down a lot. Netflix's stock is down 70%. Their currency is worth a lot less. So this would be a very expensive acquisition. Remember, in 2020, Netflix lost about $2 billion of free cash flow. So for them to go spending this kind of cash is a sign of desperation. I don't think this deal makes sense, but this is what happens when companies run into hard times. They get desperate and start doing M&A. That's why we like another thing to measure companies' health called dividends. Uh, We We were just talking about M&A for two struggling companies, Netflix and Roku. What about M&A here? Would a big bank come in and buy a firm? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I think you saw uh, PayPal hurt yesterday with Apple's news, this yeah. kind of pay later deal. Um, I think that there's going to be some weak companies that come out of it and then some strong ones. And so a firm may get uh, in the middle of M&A around that. Yeah. The, the news today is it's- the Spirit, uh, Spirit Airlines has moved their shareholder vote on oh. who they should m- merge with to the end of the month. Oh. It's now going to be on June 30th. It makes all the difference. It, well, who are they going to pick? <laughs> right now they picked Frontier, but JetBlue is very aggressive and they keep sweetening the offer. And obviously, Spirit is taking them seriously because they moved the vote on the deal. I think his head's about to explode. I was just going to say, there's nothing more fascinating than an airline company about to go out of business trying to pick which future airline company going out of business (laughs) they want to merge with. They're all doing great right now. Oh, they are doing terribly. They're they're, um, doing far better than they were when the whole world was shut down. This is true. They've picked back up. Their margins are squeezed. Their margins are squeezed. They have no hedges against oil prices. Uh, There's no pricing power. Uh, Their union costs are high. It's a terrible business. I will never invest in an airline again. You or Warren Buffett. Uh, yeah, that's right. He says that's the fastest way to lose a billion dollars, didn't he? He said he was going to start a support group for people who wanted to buy airlines. <laughs> I'll join. Yeah. I will join that one. Regular in America is now 495 In California, it is $639. you are from California. When are you going back? <laughs> yeah, well. It, Have you got an electric car? It's funny when you because this $450, uh, nearly $5 gas all around the country is brutal. It's record highs. Yeah. And yet people in California are like, gosh, we'd do anything for yeah. $4 <laughs> gas. So. <laughs> David Barnson, our guest today, specializes in dividend picks. Not just any old dividend pick, but companies which pay a growing dividend, as he never ceases to point out to me. So what are you picking today? But see, usually I have to remind you, and now you're just saying it right off the top. <laughs> That's you, right. Ad living it, no less. The lesson has sunk in. Uh, look, I want to talk about Kohl's real quickly. This stock has been hammered along with Target, Walmart, with some of these retail problems. It's trading less than seven times earnings, has a nearly 5% dividend yield, but more importantly, it's up about 15% in the last two days because there's huge takeout rumors. And we love these stories. If things go badly, we're still getting our 5% dividend in cheap stock. If all of a sudden there's a big takeout, there's a private equity company looking at a $60 takeout. It's at 45 right now. You get paid and you move on to the next one. So we like Kohl's right here. And you're also back to IBM. You've mentioned this many, many times. Old tech, you like it, yes. growing dividend. And so the reason I brought up IBM again today, Stuart, is because it's up 7% on the year. How many technology stocks are up at all? Even my other old tech stocks are down this year, Cisco and Intel. Hmm. IBM is up 7% of the year with its best days ahead. Well, why do you say that? Best days ahead because why? I think that Red Hat acquisition was a game changer in the cloud. I think they're doing small acquisitions in cybersecurity, AI. And I think IBM is actually going to be one of the few people that can make money in blockchain. It's not rank speculation with this crypto nonsense. Hmm. It's an actual uh, aspect of company strategy in their IT work. So we like IBM as a growth story going forward with a value valuation. Tell me again, what's the dividend payment? It's uh, over 5%. And you would expect that to go up? I would expect they to continue growing the dividend till kingdom come. <laughs> That's what IBM does? Yes, sir. Okay. It's been great having you on the show today. Thank, Thank you, you for your comments about politics. You were totally wrong about California, <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah. It's okay. You, you can come back anytime <laughs> you like. Listen, if there's any bet I want to lose, it's that one, but I'm not going to lose that bet, unfortunately. Yeah, you're probably not, actually. <laughs> David, a pleasure. Thanks Thank for you. being with us, sir. Thank you.